another episode of Dinner and Dialogue. We have the lovely Deborah Joy Wines joining us. So this is awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming in and uh, sitting down and breaking a little bread with us. Oh, I love it. Slice a pizza or a couple of spoonful of of salad or what have you. Whatever it is you order. Exactly, exactly. So you're you're back in Atlanta shooting Greenleaf for another episode yes. another season. Season, so, season three season three yes that's awesome okay. we are in that's it awesome. you're in it you're yes in it. so you know season two left us a little curious about what's going to happen this season <laughs> that's a lot going on what you would have to green think about <laughs> yes absolutely what is charity going to do Ooh, I mean, Lord. You know, I mean. not... we did we did leave you with a lot this is true um i think the thing that stands out for me at the end of season two, not only does Charity end up giving up the goods yeah. to the producer. Uh, of course, we saw that. Um, <laughs> that was visible. Um, Bishop is thrown out of the house and he goes to that hotel mm-hmm. where that Rochelle is. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ooh. What are we getting ready to do season three? Uh-huh. What's going to yeah. happen? Yeah. Um, and so literally in the first just two episodes, mm-hmm. they are explosive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get into the, the sort of bones of right. everything. Right. You get into the, the anger and the desperation and just the fear of, of Lady May and everything that she's feeling. You get into... Um, you sort of see why Bishop is the way he is. You get into this relationship or lack thereof of Grace and Lady May. Um, and then Charity gets her own surprise. You know, she's gotten with Jabari, the producer, and they're on tour mm-hmm. only to come back to um, somebody who's trying to fight for the child. Okay. Um, so she's got some crazy battles ahead that she did not think were going to happen. And I think that everything that she went through season two is now going to like bubble up and bubble over. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Being that you come from a gospel family, mm-hmm. how much of who Charity is and the show and experiences mm-hmm. parallels with what you may have experienced growing up being a woman? Um, well, the number one thing that I loved about Charity when I first got the script was that she was a worship leader. Okay. Um, I never wanted to sing. I know I come from a very singing family. Yes, a singing. Um, a singing family. family. Yeah. Um, which Auntie Cecil just won two Grammys. Yes. Very exciting. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but I never wanted to sing. Okay. But my favorite part of service was always the worship. Mm-hmm. And I always felt like if the worship was where it was supposed to be, and it was, because um, it's supposed to, to open the people's hearts. It's supposed to open the hearts of the congregation and just sort of prepare them for the word that is gonna come from the, from the preacher. Mm-hmm. And I always felt like if the worship was right, then there was such a sweet spirit of just fellowship and communion and the Lord just in the room. Um, which has just always been my favorite part. Um, so when I found out she was a worship leader, I was like, that's dope. I get to play the person that I think is the most amazing in church. Um, but outside of that, I think that um, Charity is very, she's the baby. <laughs> And she has longed for attention that um, she doesn't feel like she's gotten. And I think that when Grace comes home, she automatically feels even more threatened um, of just feeling like she's left out. And so I don't really, I see how that hurts Charity. Um, but that's not something I ever had to deal with. I have three brothers. Mm-hmm. I'm the only girl. So I never liked any attention. <laughs> right, I'm sure. I probably got a little too much. Um, but I like to tell people I was just very well Um But I think that 
really just the, the singing aspect, the worship aspect, um, being in my uncle's church in Detroit, Perfecting Church, he, he's a singer. I understand that he's a preacher and a pastor, but that man is a singer, and he sings from his soul, so at any moment, He'll get up to make an announcement before he's preaching, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden there's a song. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's so good that we're ten minutes into the song. Right. Um, that that's that's where I come from, and so I was able to use a lot of what I I knew and grew up with to put into this role. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but Judy is very she's very much. I'm still discovering a lot of who she is. Um, why she's dealt with that sort of feeling as if she's invisible, mm -hmm. um, what made her choose Kevin, you know, were there signs, mm -hmm. there had to be some sort of sign, yeah. but because they were close and comfortable and real friends, it's like when you fall in love and you see that, you don't see the red flags, you just are kind of, and Cherry strikes me as someone who was very much like, well, I'm going to be like my parents, and I'm going to get married, and I'm going right. to do things right, and I'm not going to have sex until I get married, and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to uh, sing in church, and I'm going to do everything by the book. And finally, they will see me, and they will respect me, and they'll appreciate me. And I think that that was her plan, so much so to the detriment of actually seeing what she was doing, mm -hmm. and really seeing the person that she ended up marrying. Now, years later, you have this man who's... Not into you. Right. Um, <laughs> no, 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 you <laughs> At all. <laughs> Which is, I think, an even worse blow because you're already dealing with feeling like your parents don't appreciate you, they don't see you. You've married this man who is the best thing in your life to you. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're finding that he's not even fully into who you are. Right. Um, and that you don't really have anything to offer that's going to make him want to stay or want to be in love. Mm -hmm. um, which I can't imagine what that would do to a woman's self-esteem and confidence and self-worth. And even at the point that she finds out, pregnant with twins. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Charity's, Charity's been through quite a bit. So I don't, I don't have a whole lot of parallels for her uh, concerning my life, but I've absolutely been able to pick and choose quite a few different things. Um, even just being in church and what that feels like and what that means. Um, I love the Lord and I love being in service and I love just being able to sit in fellowship and worship with other believers. And, yeah. um, and so when I do get to perform songs, you know, you know, through charity for a service, um, we really have moments when we're shooting that are very God-filled, that are very... You know, they'll say cut, but everybody's still going because we're actually in a moment. We're actually worshiping. We're actually believing everything it is we're singing and saying. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I love discovering who she is. It's bits of my life, um, but it's a lot of just discovery and finding and kind of reveling in the newness of who, who she is and what she's going through. So, you know, you've talked to us about charity and, and uh, all of her challenges that she has had mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. Who is Deborah Cho? You know, mm -hmm. what do you bring to the characters and your mm -hmm. songs that you sing and things of that nature that, you know, will give us a little bit of insight of who you are? Yeah, um, you know, I'm just a girl from Detroit, born and raised. Um, I have three brothers, two older, one younger, and I've always wanted to act. That's all I've ever wanted to do since I was a little girl. Right. Uh, my parents would take us to double features on the weekends, and we would just stare at the movies, and I would always tell my dad, I can do that. Just looking at any girl that was on there, white, black, whatever, it didn't matter. And it was mostly white. Um, right. But I would just look, and I just had this passion, this desire, and I would say, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. And 
even when I was in high school, we didn't have a, a drama department. And so I got to college and I told my parents I was majoring in theater and they were like, what are you talking about? You've never done theater. I said, huh, yeah, but you know, I know I can do it. And uh, of course my mom tried to talk me into something else, like major, maybe you should major in journalism or you know, major in communication and uh, minor in theater. And I was like, yeah, no, that's okay. And they came to see my first show, which was, we did Hospice by Pearl Clay. It was a two-woman show. And afterwards, my parents and my brothers were like, oh, this is what you do. Right. This is, okay. Do what you do. You were and born they, for this. But yeah, but <laughs> you know what you do. You were born for born this. Born for this. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But, you know, that is a... <laughs> Great segue. Well, go ahead. <laughs> you are hilarious. Literally. Born for this. Right. For sure. Um, and they supported it. And so I got my BFA at Wayne State University from Detroit. Right. And then I moved to LA and got my MFA from CalArts. And I certainly thought, you know, with CalArts on my resume, this is just going to happen. Every part like, is part. Just, come right. on. <laughs> and um, it did not happen that way. I had been, I see, I graduated from CalArts 2010, and I ended up auditioning after a while for um, this woman who was doing monologues for a conference called Women of Faith. Mm -hmm. And it would go around the country. Um, it's like a sort of empowerment for women. So it would be 10 to 15,000 women every city we went to. And they would have different speakers, um, singers, comedy relief, and then they'd have someone perform these monologues. And they wanted to split the conference up into two coasts. So she had to hire someone else to cover her coast. And so I ended up booking that, which was an amazing first job. Um, traveling every weekend, going to different places, really being able to hone my gift and, and use it and get experience um, and to do it in a, in a space that was um, awesome for your spirit and for your soul. Um, you know, every, every weekend we went to, it's always something that would rejuvenate you and encourage you and motivate you to keep you going. So it's, it's a great environment to be in. Um, and I also ended up meeting my husband along the way. And um, which was really really dope. He's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and so that was that was my first gig. And then I got married in 2013. Oh, okay. And um, was literally like, okay, starting to doubt. Like, was this what I was really called to do? Because things weren't happening. I couldn't get an agent. Couldn't get a manager. Um, everybody that I went to was like, oh yeah, of course you want new talent. You know, what have you done? I'm like, well, I'm new. Right. So I, I'm I a need you to help me. I'm a wine. I'm a wine. <laughs> See, Look, wine. <laughs> and people, you know, you realize how much work you have to do. If yeah. They don't care who you, you are. And, yeah. I, and I, you know, I've never been someone who wanted to kind of skate by on my name. Right, right. I've always wanted to do the work. Absolutely. Someone in, uh, said in undergrad, I'll never forget, I was getting cast in all the lead roles. Mm -hmm. And someone said, they're only doing that because um, cause she's a wine end. Mm -hmm. We're in Detroit and this right, is right. her family's town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it continued year after year after year. And I said, no ma'am, if I wasn't good, they wouldn't do this. Right. Don't take away the gift because you want it to be something else. Right. You know. Um, it's God's plan. It's God's plan. <laughs> it's his gift. And so, you know, I won't. I figured people would say that, but I knew I had done the work. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that's the only reason why they were casting me. Because I had done the work. Right. And I was going to get it done. Um, so, yeah, it's, it wasn't, it was not an easy road. Um, so there were parts of... Deborah Joy that began to doubt. I mean, I was when I tell you I knew what I wanted to do, I knew when it was gonna happen, I knew how it was gonna happen. And then I got to this part of me that I didn't think would ever happen. It's like, wait, am I really doubting what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, 
I got very discouraged. And so my husband, which is, look, it is very important the people that you have around you, right. whether it's your spouse, your friends, whoever is around you, make sure they know you and make sure they are able to speak to those things that are inside you even when you can't see it and even when you're discouraged because I was very discouraged and I was like you know I'm just going to be whatever I'm just going to go get a basic job and just do whatever maybe I'll just be a housewife and maybe I'll just have kids and blah 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 and my husband was like eventually you know we can have kids but that's not what you're supposed to do right now and I would fight him on it and he was just like I just need you to focus you want to take another class maybe do some camera classes you know, stay stay up on your gift. Keep making sure that you're doing what you have to do so that you're prepared. And I'm like, prepare for what? It's just not happening. And um, but thank God he just would bear with me. And, um, and he continued to encourage me. And my uncle called. He had been working on this this play, which is a coming-of-age story of BB and Cece, um, how they became who they were, the people that got them there, um, the things that they endured along the way. And so he called me and said that he wanted to do a workshop in Boston, he wanted me to come be CC. And I thought, okay, sure, whatever. So I go, this was in 2013, a couple months after I got married. And um, it was a week. So when I came home, I told my husband, I'm never going back. I don't sing like Cece, I don't yeah. sound like her. It is what, like, she's not just anybody to just try to sing. Right, that was You don't it, just you know. pick that music and just yeah. be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sing this. Yeah. No, you don't do that. Right. Yeah. Her voice, <laughs> it's sad to be, you don't do that. Sound that, right? Yeah, nerve wracking too. Sure. You know, like, was, should I be doing this? And I didn't realize it would be like that mm -hmm. until I got in the room. And I was the one who said I never wanted to sing, so I didn't work on my singing. And I'm sitting in a room with all these people, these kids are from Berkeley School of Music. I mean, they've got all their music, they're reading all the notes, and uh, they're doing all their... Uh, uh, I was like, what is this? I don't read music, I don't even sing, I don't even do this. And so I got, I froze. And um, we started singing some of the stuff, and I just said, I can't do this. And of course my uncle was like, oh, baby, you got it, you got it. I pushed through, you know, I did my, my good acting. But when I got home, I said, this is too challenging. I just, if I wasn't a Winans, maybe I could try to figure it out. But the fact that I'm a Winans, people are going to expect me to sound like her, to look like her, to move like her. And that's just, there's a reason why there's only one CC. So I was very, um, I got home, so I was never going to do it. My uncle called the next summer, said they were doing another workshop. And I was on the phone, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, great, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, I'm just going, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you in like two days. And I hung up, I said, baby, I'm not going, I'm going to book something, something's going to happen for me, and I'm not going to come. That didn't happen. Uh, my husband called me and told me I would be there. And right when I wanted to be so upset with him, my uncle called the day before I was supposed to leave and said, guess who's going to come and be BB? I was like, who? My brother. My brother, my second oldest brother, Juan. And I just, I'm, I'm a family girl. And so anytime that I get to spend with my family, I cherish it. And I thought, well, okay. So we're going to go to Boston and like hang out on somebody else's dime for a whole week. I'm good with that. Right. And, you know, God knows the push that you need to get you where he wants you to be because had it not been Juan or had I not really sort of given in to what that could be I may not be here um, but we got there and it was magical okay, but we have a, a long ways to go I still had to get rid of that fear of feeling like I was going to be a disappointment to other people right and I remember Cece calling me, and um, she said, I said, it's too hard to be you. And she started laughing. She said, what are you talking about? I said, it's too hard. I can't sound like you. All these songs, why do you sound so stinking good? 
And um, after she left me, she said, Joy, you don't have to be me. She said, if you just open your mouth, there is a general tone that we have as family. So dig into that and just figure out how you would want to say something and let that come. And I was like, well, oh, okay, maybe. And the moment I let that fear go and just decided to figure out what it would be for me and my voice, I started sounding like her. <laughs> it started moving like her. Um, and it was just amazing. And so we found out the top of 2015 that we were going to do a co-production in 2016 with the Alliance Theater here in Atlanta. And then Arena Sage in Washington, D.C. And so we did one final workshop in New York um, to sort of let New York know there's a new musical happening. And Miss Winfrey came to that workshop. We were literally, what, 10 feet away? It was her and Gail and Cicely Tyson. It was just sort of like, are we really performing this in front of y'all? Right, right. With some music stands and a little piano. <laughs> um, but we did. and. We were all sort of waiting with bated breath. Like, what did she think? Did she like it? What's happening? But we hadn't heard anything. And so that was in March of 2015. And in May, um, I was sort of, I had just gotten back from New York from a friend's wedding. And I was on my couch praying. And I was just like, God, you know, I'm running into so many doors when it comes to finding an agent. You know, being able to get myself out there, you know, get into a room. I, if I can just get into a room and know a casting director is going to see the gift that you've given me. It's like, if, if this is something you want me to do, then I need you to open the door. That was my prayer. Point blank. I need you to open the door. Um, and literally the next day, my uncle called me and said, girl, guess who just called me? I was like, who? It was like nine something. I was like, who? And he said, Oh, I said, really? I was like, how's she doing? Oh, is she talking about the play? Did she like it? Mm -hmm. And he was like, we talked about the play for two seconds because she called to ask me who my niece was that played Cece. And I said, are you, are you serious? Yeah. Like for real? Uh -huh. And he said, girl, yes. She's got this new show that they're going to put on her network. And she said she couldn't get you out of her mind for one role. And so she wants you to email her your headshot, your resume, and I was like, like, email her? <laughs> like, right. should I address it to somebody else, like, uh -huh. in care of for right. her? Right. Or, and he said, no, email her. So I emailed her my headshots, my resume, and she wrote me back, and I was like, oh my goodness, is this really happening? And you probably still have that email. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> File the way, print it out in a frame on your dress. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was what was beautiful to me was it's just God's timing is perfect and I was at that point of feeling like I needed confirmation that I was where I was supposed to be and uh, just her thinking of that yeah. out of all the people that she sees every day the people right. that she meets the places that she goes mm -hmm. in a span of two months yeah. and I'm on your mind I was like, God, that's just, even if this doesn't happen, that lets me know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Just keep plugging away. Keep being ready. You got to, if you, if you get ready, you don't, if you stay, stay ready, you don't have to get ready. That's one of my So just stay ready to keep look, getting ready. Look, Sean, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. So I just, I just felt really, really good about that. I felt like I was headed in the right direction. And, um. So then I sent her, I sent her my stuff, she emailed me back, asked me um, if I had anything with me singing. And I said, oh, I don't, but I can create something. And she said, don't worry about it, when it's time for people to hear you, you know, they'll, they'll hear what I hear, I'm sure. And then she asked me for my cell phone number. And I was like, okay. I like, call, like, why would she call? Maybe she's gonna have somebody call me. Right, right. And then she called. And um, I was like, oh my gosh. She said, Deborah Joy, it's, it's Oprah, how are you? I was like, I'm good. I think I'm good. Um, and she told me the little bit that she could about the show. Um, and she told me when she mentioned me to the people at the network, 
unfortunately no one knew who I was right. and I said mm, they, they wouldn't I mean yeah. I haven't really done anything yeah. she said it's okay I believe in you and I, I really think that they'll see what I see when it's time for you to audition so you know when it's time it's either me or somebody from my office somebody will call you right and and, and we'll get you in there and do what you want and do and I just said oh my goodness thank you thank you thank you thank you for thinking of me and um I had two auditions. My the day after my second audition is when they called and told me I got it. And I was on I was on Vine between Sunset and Hollywood with my brother, sister, my niece, and my husband. And I broke down in the middle of the street crying. My niece was like, Auntie, are you okay? I said, Baby, you don't understand. Like it was just the fact that I, I knew it was because of her, I knew that she believed in me, right. and she went with that gut, no matter what others said, mm -hmm. no matter what you know anybody else at the network may have said, or anybody at the studio may have said, mm -hmm. um, because this was a big show for her network. You know, it was the first you know new scripted series mm -hmm. um, that wasn't um, from <laughs> Tyler Perry. It was just all everything was brand new. Right. Right. Um, and so I knew that they were taking a chance. I knew that she had taken a chance. And it, all it takes is that opportunity. All it takes is that one person that's gonna believe in you and fight for you and champion you. And I just, I said, Lord, I know this is you. And it's, ha it's not happening when I thought it would. It's certainly not happening how I thought it would. But it was just a testament to show that if you just let God do what he does, you do your part and you let him do his, it's going to end up way better than you could have ever planned. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything 
better than yeah. that, but yeah. I've already talked about that. So no, no, another no, fake good. girl moment. That's, that's real. Is it? I, I mean, mean that's I mean, who gets a call from Oprah? I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> you know, so I can have my own moment. But that's uh that's, that's no perfect. home moments, that's only no home moments. moments. Right, right. Your favorite B V and C C song. Ooh, uh different lifestyles. Different lifestyles. Yeah. Okay. I was listening to on the way over here, Lost Without You. That was funny. That's when it just that, that was a that jam. was made me a fan. That was a jam. Lost Without You was a jam. And my uncle actually made me sing it when he went somewhere to sing and he took me with him. Yeah. And he made me sing well. I said, I've never sung this before. Yeah. I do, why? Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> um, but that song was a jam. Yes. Different Lifestyles is from the Different Lifestyles album. It was never a single, I don't believe. But I just love the musicality of it. It's very, it's got a little, right. you know, right. I, I, I love that song. Right. So what, what would you say people probably wouldn't know that you would have in your iPod that you listen to or... Um. <laughs> they probably think too. Oh yeah, she's, she's a Tamla man. She's probably oh, listening to, and, the, know, the, and, and that's, that's nowhere in my music. Okay. Uh, All right. okay. <laughs> uh, pro probably Drake. Okay. Probably Drake. So what do you think of his latest uh, single? Actually, I don't. I haven't heard it. Oh. I only actually only have one song of it. Oh wait a minute. And this pause. I'm like, <laughs> she's talking my shit. I have it. Am, okay. am I am I iPod? Okay. Yeah, you did. That was the question. You know, okay. That was the question. That was the question. Don't back up all good. That was the question. Um okay. But I mean whole albums. I I don't have a whole lot of gospel. I have my family because I just think that they're really good. Yeah. Um but Joe Okay. Yes. Joe Thomas. Yes. I mean, can't nobody yes. do it like Joe. That's right. That's right. Joe is good. Yeah. Joe is good. So I'm just going to ask you this. Put that, address the elephant in the room. Because I was saying, should I ask for this? Should I not? What are your thoughts with the whole Me Too movement? Oh. All the things that have come out. Have you had, not personal experiences per se, but mm. have had maybe friends or no people personally? have really strong opinions about it either way. I like, haven't. support that whole, whole I don't I don't have anyone um, personally that I know that have, you know, experienced that or felt like, you know, they needed to share their story. I, I don't right, right. Yeah. I don't have anybody like that. Um, of course I support it. Yeah. You know, I, it's it just shouldn't be. It's something that shouldn't be. Um, but with it, I just, I fear that it could get carried away to a point of anything being seen as uh, sexual harassment or assault, and that's just not life. Um, so clearly there are people that use their power for, for very bad things. That's not okay. I mean, you don't condone any of it. Um, and so I think that it's powerful. I think that it's a wonderful movement. And I just pray that it sticks to things that truly are harassment and assault versus he looked at me funny and I just felt like I couldn't turn away because I could lose my job. No, no, that's, that's because at the end of the day, that is something that if that person is truly not assaulting you or harassing you, you are changing their life forever in a very bad way. Yeah. When you, we, have, we have to watch what we say and, and, and how we say it. What, what we're saying is, is happening versus what's actually happening. Um, because then that comes down to can, can somebody court anybody anymore? You know, if you have two single people and, and the guy asks you out, is that what is is that okay? Yeah. Is that not okay? Right. You know what I mean? Um, so I just think that it could get close to a very fine line. Um, 
of what is and what isn't. And I just, I pray that we keep it about the things that really truly are harassment and assault so that those people can be taken out of the place that they're in and, and everybody else can feel good uh, to be where they are, don't feel like there's, you know, anybody treating them a certain way or, or not treating them a certain way. And, you know, so I, just, I, I think it's, I think it's great. And I just think it stays, uh, I hope it stays focused. Yes, I agree. Okay, well, thank you so much for sitting and talking to us, Ms. Joy. You have been just that. <laughs> uh, and all your names precede you. Joy, Charity, and what you play enough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all of those things. But uh, it's been really a really pleasure. Thank you so much for taking Thank time. Thank you. It's been great. So tell the people how they can, you know, follow you, know what, what's going on with you, and Absolutely. Instagram, and Facebook, what have you. This has been, thank you, Sean, this has been absolutely delightful. Um, this is a place where it, it just feels safe, and you feel like you get to rest, relax, talk, release. Um, so this has actually been very therapeutic and fun. Um, so thank you for having me. And you can find me on Instagram as Deborah Joy Williams, and that's the long Deborah. I'm very sorry, it's the Deborah from the Bible. Uh, so that's D E B O R A H J O Y W I N A N S. Um, you can find me as Deborah Joy Winans on Facebook as well, and then on Twitter, I think it's just Deborah J Winans. You don't use it that much. I don't. I think it's either Deborah J Winans or Deborah Joy Winans. One of the two. But come find me and we will talk, laugh, share pictures and enjoy life.